Hey guys, welcome to part four. We're going to just pick up exactly where we left off on the previous video. We were talking about the internal components of PCPs and how everything works inside the guns. Today we're going to talk about balancing all those components in a way that gives you the power that you need without wasting air unnecessarily. So different PCPs can be set to shoot at different powers according to what the shooter requires but one of the biggest struggles is trying to get as many usable shots as possible from your gun at that power. When we talk about the efficiency of a gun, we basically talk about how much air is used per shot. A more efficient gun will waste less air and therefore give you a higher shot count. PCPs can be adjusted in a number of different ways. Some guns have an adjustable transfer port, by making the transfer port smaller or bigger, you can restrict the flow of air to the barrel and therefore alter the muzzle velocity of the gun. This is a very easy way to adjust the power, but it doesn't really save much air because it isn't necessarily stopping the air from passing through, it's just slowing it down. Another way to adjust power is by altering the hammer weight or hammer spring tension. This basically changes the amount of time the valve is open for. This is a good way of adjusting the power, but if you're not careful, you can over tighten the hammer spring. If you look at this graph of hammer spring tension to velocity, you'll see that there comes a point where the velocity cannot increase anymore. If the hammer spring is tightened beyond this point, the air will just be wasted. So there needs to be a balance between the hammer spring and the valve return spring, if you get what I'm saying. The third way to adjust the power on a PCP is by changing the regulator pressure. The pressure that a gun operates at will determine the velocity of the pellet, but again, it's not as straightforward as simply increasing reg pressure to increase power. As weird as it sounds, it is actually possible to increase the velocity by decreasing the reg pressure. Yes, it's kind of counterintuitive, but this happens because the decreased pressure is allowing the valve to stay open for longer. This can get rather confusing, so for the most part, it's usually better to leave the regulator at the pressure it was set in the factory. The last thing that can affect PCP efficiency is hammer bounce. This is actually a huge problem that is often overlooked. Basically, when a rifle is fired, there can be a little wrestling match between the hammer and the valve. So to illustrate that point a bit better, we're going to pretend that this walking stick is a hammer and this wall face is the valve stem. It's going to act the same way as the valve stem would. It will want to bounce the hammer back. And the way that the hammer is designed can hugely influence whether there is actually bounce or not. So for this first test, we're going to keep tension on the hammer, like most PCPs, which are under spring tension when they hit the hammer. And we're going to see what happens. Can you hear that after the initial hit, there are multiple little hits that come almost immediately afterwards. Now that, my friends, is what wastes air. That initial hit is what drives the pellet out. But each of those successive hits are happening when the pellets are already on its way out the barrel. In other words, they're just wasting air. So that, that is a massive problem. But there is such an easy way to eradicate this problem, and I'll show you how. For the second test, we're going to hit that wall again, but just before the hammer reaches the valve pin, I'm going to let go of it. In other words, the hit is happening because of the inertia or the momentum of the hammer itself and not because of the spring tension. And let's see what happens. You see that there's a hit and there's no successive impacts. It's such a simple way of doing things. The Daystate Slingshot Hammer is doing it, the FX Hammer is doing it. Note to all you other air gun designers out there, do this, it's going to give you so many more extra shots. It's such a small change that you have to make and it just makes the shooter's experience so much better. And it quiet quietens the gun, so there's actually no reason not to do this. Come on guys, you can do it. So there are many ways to get rid of hammer bounce. Some companies use inertia hammers that strike the valve without any spring tension behind them. The Harper Slingshot Hammer that's found on Daystate and Brocock Rifles, for example, propels the hammer towards the valve and then slingshots it forward so that it strikes the hammer with its own momentum instead of with spring tension behind it. 
Similarly, the FX hammers are free to move forward and backwards along a guide rail with no permanent spring tension behind them. This has the same effect as the slingshot hammer and for this reason Daystate and FX guns are known to be extremely efficient with the air. At 12 foot pounds, for example, the FX impact is giving 720 shots per full. That is just absolutely insane if you compare it to some of the other guns on the market. Some guns have little devices at the valve pin itself that stop the hammer from bouncing. These little bits of ingenuity could potentially give you like 50% more shots. And I'm actually quite shocked and disappointed that more gun manufacturers haven't made an effort to do something about hammer bounce in their products. It's one tiny design change that could make a massive difference to overall performance. So there are all these things that can affect PCP efficiency, but unfortunately, there's no magic formula that can tell you exactly how you need to adjust each part to get the best efficiency for the power you're looking for. It's really more of a trial and error thing, but it does help to have some knowledge of how everything works. Heck, the settings that give you the best efficiency may not even be the settings that give you the best accuracy, but the only way to know that is to try it out for yourself. And that is why I'm so excited about a gun like the FX Impact. This gun allows you to adjust hammer spring tension, valve travel, regulator pressure, and even allows you to switch calibers in seconds. It's an absolute dream come true for someone like me who just loves to tinker around and experiment. So, this was a rather complicated episode. I really hope I came across clear enough. If not, please just post in the comment section below and I'll do my best to explain a little better. In the next video, we'll be looking at recoil dynamics and harmonics. I suspect that most of you have absolutely no idea what that means, but don't fear, that's the whole point of these videos. I'm gonna teach you this stuff. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.